Yo, Mo, sometimes you gotta take them back and move them forward. Talk to them. I done burnt down blocks, paid off cops, broke bread with niggas, ate off the top. Money round the clock, shit don't stop. Everything glittery, wrists on rocks. Sold it by the pounds, get it off the dock. Holes all around, bitches by the flops. Niggas wanna do me like big though. We can play, Mo got kid though. You see the neck, wrist, air glow. With them whips, I'm a nympho. I'm so souped up, lentho. Yeah, baby mom, she a nympho. She bought it back like Ty Boogie. That's when I let it go like the nine milli. Blocker, blocker. Bubble bath, rose flow, the dough dropper. Shit, show out for my whole damn crew. Niggas try to front, but they know that they feel me. It's like, in New York, you got these poor areas around all this rich area. You know? And that's the funny thing. This is a story about a city. This city. And what people don't, what people don't understand, the word project. Project, yeah, and, and, and you know that it was a project. It was a fucking project. I guess like every culture that comes to New York, especially, you know, you like, like you say uh, Italians and Irish and how they put down, how they put their work in so they could get respected. So nobody, that's how every culture did. And they did the same thing. It's like Puerto Ricans, when we came, we had to do the same thing. You know, we had to fight with the blacks. And that's what happened with the gangs. They had the, they threw the Puerto Ricans, when the Puerto Ricans came to, um, to America, they threw them all in the ghetto with the black people. And the, of course the black people are upset because there's no room in there already. There's no room, it's already poor. And you throw a bunch of people that don't even speak English in their, in their community and you expect them to feel happy. And you know, there's no room already. So now you got more people, more struggle, and then the blacks and the Puerto Rican not getting along. That's why you start having the black gang, the Puerto Rican. Puerto Ricans have to protect themselves from the blacks and uh, and the whites. So it was hard. It was hard struggle for my parents, man. Gangs as far as uh, a thousand dudes uh, calling themselves Bloods or Crips mm. from, from every every borough or, no, no. or every state or whatever. It was just, that gang was for that little block mm -hmm. right there. So if you stepped out of that block, that's your ass if you don't know nobody. Mm -hmm. I remember on my, my block, people used to come and put <laughs> gang, their gang colors used to hang on on, on the fly, on the light pole. Because mm -hmm. you couldn't cross certain areas because of the gang activity. Exactly. I had a cousin called C2. He was part of the Savage Skulls. The warlord, uh, I wanted to be like him. He was three years older than me. He wrote a little graffiti, but he was mostly just a badass. My cousin, I looked up to him. He, if I was nine, he was already, what, three years, maybe 13, and he already had muscles, man. This guy already had muscle, and he was strong. And a lot of people fear him already, being 13, 14 years old in the Bronx. I really want to be like that. I want to be tough, care, wild like him. I want to just be strong, you know, in the hood. He, he took me under his wing. I had to build my body, build my confidence. He said the main thing, you have to fight. And he said, once they pick on you, it's over. If you never step up, uh, go back at them guys, it's going to be over for you, man. The, world, the life we're living now, there's a lot of stuff going on. These people don't get along with this people. These people are against this one, this one here. You walk into the, you walk in the wrong way, wrong neighbor, you're gonna get jumped. If you can't fight in school, they're gonna punk you all day. So he taught me all that. And then the, they had a division of Savage Skulls opening up for baby skulls. I wound up joining with them. I'm gonna tell you another story. I went down south. I was so bad, my mom shit me down south, right? So my boy Elf, he calling me, telling me how they chilling and hip yeah. and everything, Grandmaster Flash. So I made my mom bring me back from down south, right? So they created a gang called CTC, right? Oh yeah. And, they, and so yeah. they call, and then they called me the president, yeah. right? So when I get yeah. back, they give me the hat. 
They said, you the president, you the leader. We sat them up. Oh my God, we yo. <laughs> I had somebody so had much to, beef. Somebody yo. had to be the yeah, president. Yeah, I, I was home for one day. I yeah. put that hat on, call myself walking through yeah. the yeah. I had so many dudes chasing me, <laughs> wanting to fight me. Everybody, oh, you see TC? Yeah. I'm like, yo, what these dudes yeah. are doing? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. And I said, yo, they set me up. Yeah. I thought it was, I said, like, this is an honor. Y'all making me the leader? I said, Get that <laughs> yeah. down, so I, I was suited up, wore my hat proud. Yeah. It only took 15 minutes before I got outside. A lot of B-Boys was gang members. And now explain, explain that, like how, explain the connection between the gang members and the early B-Boys. Before B-Boy and my gang, I learned outlaw, I, I learned outlaw rocking from a kid named Hollywood. He told me how to do this dance. It was outlaw rocking as in imitating a fight. Tell me, the first time you see me dance, what I did? When you said I was up rocking against somebody that grabbed right, you grab his head and you palm his head and you brought you know, your, your private parts to his face. <laughs> and that started said, something too. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> we had to leave it. That's when we were talking about that certain, like, okay, great dancing wasn't created to, 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 to go to places and fight. It was created to resolve a different mm -hmm. way of fighting. Yeah. But up rocking was way before break dancing, and that was always a problem wherever you went. Because if you went like to fight. places where there was other gangbangers and danced against each other, most definitely was gonna turn into a conflict. Yeah, Bronx style is definitely outlaw rocking. We always said it from the beginning, no matter what. Sometimes Brooklyn talks about they started uh, that certain dance, but then a lot of them say they didn't come from the gang. But from the Bronx, the fighting and all that jigging, jagging, stabbing, shooting and everything comes from the gang. And dudes be like, I had a cousin, lucky, you know, I had a cousin, and he saw that I was going really the wrong way. Like, he did his thing, and that was his life for a long time. But for me, he saw, again, like in, in two years, I was getting really bad. And he, he's like, no, you're a good artist, man. You're a good dancer. Like, I, I can't see my cousin going, like, getting locked up. I had to go to spa for him, you know, when I got older. So he was like, no, 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 like, you're going to get out. You're gonna get out. I said, no, I don't wanna get out. You know, I felt like I was powerful, you know, I felt like a man. Even though I'm only, only like 13 years old at the time, 9, 10, 11, 12, like 12. He, he's the one that pushed me out. You know, I didn't have to go through no a patch line or nothing. They talked, they let me out. From that day on, I didn't know what to do. And that's when I started moving around. First it was um, the gang truce. After that dude got killed, I think his name was like Benji or something like that, a black dude. He was with the the Ghetto Brothers, yeah. Then they tried to have, then they had that big meeting. See, that's where the Warriors get it from. Mm -hmm. They had that big meeting and this and that and that. So now it's time to party because I don't got to stay in one area. The jams in the street, the, the park jams, oh, that no, was, that's what, parties are that was what introduced me to hip hop. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The block yeah. jams, because yeah. there was a jam in every project that had a jam. Yeah. Yeah. They had a jam in Carver, they had a jam in Clinton. You they could walk around, like yes, walk around. Walk, you could walk around. Let's go see what's over Let's walk down here. jamming over here, let's go over here, we'll go over there. And and whoever had the best joint, you could rock. That's where we stayed at. those girls, more those girls. Once it was done in the park, it was like anyone could go. If you're a little kid, you go to the park, you see something. You get amazed by the dance, by by someone's painted jacket or painted clothes, pants, or something. Something motivate you to be like, oh, you know, I, I could do something with this. And they did. By going to the park help a lot of kids get away from the more violence part of life. Now people want to say, oh, I want to be a dancer. This one, he's dope. What I saw from my window was on 115 and Lex behind PS57, they flashing them people used to be out there. All sorts of DJs used to come out there. So when they used to play f f flashlight mm. music like that, and it was funk. 
It wasn't even and, and, and James Brown and we didn't know hip hop was alive yet. That was before hip hop came. Mm -hmm. it, it was like you know it was crazy. Like we was listening to Tom Jones. Like whoa whoa pussycat. Like. You know it wasn't really no major black artist playing on the radio. From that age, we saw the um, grow and change. They started playing some music in the parks. Things like walking out, feel the groove, funk records, James Brown, say it loud. Like, all these freaking records. And we started dancing differently. E-Boy was the one to dance to funk music, to, to the breaks of the beats. That's why I give a lot of props. A lot of people don't want to give props to Cool Herc, but you gotta understand what he did. They play the break of the records. They didn't play the whole song all the time. They play the break so the dancers could get down. They were playing just a section of the record and they kept looping it. And that's when it all went crazy. People had a chance to go off. Early B-Boys from Cool Herc probably stay on top. In the second, the next generation, I call it the second generation, the A1 B boys, they start going down the ground. They start getting down on the ground and doing all kinds of moves on the floor. Little by little, they were picking up and making, you know, flavor. So, bam, bam, spin, the tops, you know. You know, that was the real um, battle. The battle was the footwork. The footwork and the freeze. Top rocking was nice. It gave you style. But when you put in work, you do the footwork, and then you freeze. Different freezes, you know? It's like a signature. Some people credit you for being the first brother to spin on his head, bro. Is that the fact? Yeah, I was. I was, that's you know, because... What made you do that? Like, what made you think of that move to do that? That's like a signature move now. Yeah, because I used to have this other move, you know, you know, everybody had their little signature little thing they did when they when they finished their, finished their little um, set. And um, a couple times, um, I had this one move where I um had my hands on the ground. Matter of fact, they use a silhouette in a lot of posters and stuff where the guy look like he's leaning on his neck with his hands um on the ground and his feet dangling in the air, both feet. And I, you know, I I named that after my mentor Charlie Rock. You know. One or two times, you know, I went to go do that move and I banged my head on the ground, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> you know, because back then we didn't use, we didn't use cardboard or linoleum. Exactly. You no, know, it was all concrete and blacktop. We went, we just went at it. And um, when I went down there to do the move one time, I wound up on the top of the head, so I just took it and I, I just, I just did it. And, um, you know, we didn't go around multiple times. Other than that, you wouldn't have no hair on the top of your head. You know, because we did it on blacktop. Yeah. And um, I went around once, maybe one and a half to two times, and came down with it, man, and the crowd went crazy. Mm. And um, I started doing it every every time I got into a little little battle. You know, people were looking forward to seeing me do it. As it came, the years passed, and it, it like, changed, changed time, like time passed by. Instead of going with these, people's made a choice to dance off because it was less problems with police, with people going to getting killed or mm -hmm. shot or blood. You know, it was more of a con. A co it was still a confrontational yeah, thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it was more on the safe side. It was almost like an alternative to fighting. You know what I'm saying? Like we ain't gonna fight. We are gonna get down. Was it, was it like that for you? Yeah. It's like when I got out the gang, I, had, I took off my vest. It went from the leather to the sweatshirt with your crew name on the back, your name on the front, iron on stuff. Everybody was running to Corvettes, 
to uh, Woolworths to get the letters and you go home and you iron that stuff on. If you got down with a crew, you got blessed. You start rocking with it and it became all about like a dance now. Because it really you know? was about real beef. Y'all beef boy because y'all don't like each other. Yeah. It's not like y'all beef. See, nowadays, you see it's a sport. You know, they beef yeah. boy and they took it to another level. Back then, you beef boy because you don't like them. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Normally, we'll jump them or they'll jump one of us. Yeah. This is why we fighting, but we're going to beef boy. And a lot of times, these little breakdancing battles used to be yeah. tense. It's all competition. Everything became a competition. Even though they don't want to say it, it did. Your own homeboy, you practice b-boy every day, you know, you want to take him out. And, and, and dancing is the way we were able to get what would be fame. You know, we got, we got some fame from the dancing. And whether it was rock and pop and boogie and breaking, it didn't matter. If you did it right, you don't get a chance to do a two-step with the girlie. I wanted to be this guy. I wanted to be that guy. You know what I mean? I wanted to look battle this guy. Well, I wanted this guy to see that I'm a dancer too. So basically, you know, Wayne Blizz after school, we all used to take a trip and we go to each projects all the way up state, uptown. And we used to um, battle everybody, you know, anybody in our projects, we go to the best dance over there and we battle them so we can get our name up. We had a battle, it was a battle. Rock study out in Brooklyn in um, Brighton Beach. And the battle, Ch Chino did a backspin. Remember you used to wear the BBDs? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he did that on the, the, on the, on the, on the broad one. Remember the splinter? Yeah, the splinter with the, oh, oh. Uh, and Coney Island. Yeah. Yeah. Coney Island, that yeah. bull, he did a backspin on that. You know that twirl of splinters he had oh. on his back? Wow. Remember he was messing with him when he did that, he took it. You ever feel like anybody ever cut you? You ever felt like you got cut up? Mm -hmm. We had real big battle, Crusaders versus the Floor Masters. The first one on the floor was Johnny. His name is Zip. Rest in peace. This dude was nasty. Well, they sent me out, you know, to try to cut him up. So basically, what I was, you know, doing my thing and everything, and then I bust a head spin on the concrete. No freaking cardboard, nothing. Straight concrete head spin, no hands. They're crowd went wild. Everybody's like, ah. I mean, granted, Crusaders still lost the battle, but. <laughs> You know what I like too, man? It's like when you go with these neighborhoods, yeah, first it feels rough, you know? And you're like, okay, it's gonna might be beef, now I'm just here to battle, I'm a b-boy, I'm ready to rock, you know? And uh, you battle, you do your thing, and it, you know, a lot of times it turns out to be a good thing because you start respecting each other for each other's style. I, I, not to take nothing from no um, rock study, but yeah. I was like, yeah. damn, why Zip don't get floor master? Zip was strong, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Oh, Zip yeah. used to come through. He had his own unique a, style, yeah, you know? Style. He was like a sport, Puerto Rican Mexican. Like, yeah. he had his own style. The, little... the New York City floor Breakers, masters, the Floor yeah. Masters, the uh, Dynamic that Breakers, you know, Furious Rockers. You know, rockers. Executioners, you had the Floor Master Tots, Grego, you had Zip. Yeah, Dice, yeah, Chino, we have some nice cats out there. You know, I, I looked up to Larry Love. Larry Love, hands down, had the best flow. I wouldn't say just one, but if I had to think about really one, if I had a choice, I'd just have to say Spy. I'm not saying I was the best, but one of the best. But I, I was up there. I didn't get cut up too often. Larry Love to top, Wiggles top. That duel right there. Unbeatable. I don't yeah, think everybody right. ever beat those two, no, man. I, see. I don't know. I'm gonna tell you. Kippy D and Little Spot. Right, but mm -hmm. we talk about. Uh, no, we talk about, about what you were doing because these people are from your era. Kippy we, we, D, we, we, no we, one beat but him. But what about I'm, Little Spot? What you thought about him? I say he. We're gonna come and fuck with him. I'm, I'm not gonna get into the debate <laughs> because I, that's my man. You my man. Yeah, he's my and, boy, and, and, B. I know him. All right. So I'm, <laughs> what I'm saying is right now, the, the, you cannot. Say that you could talk about the uh, Harlem and, 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 and the history of the B-Boys in Harlem without mentioning you. Because we was doing it out there in it before we met you. Right. We met you in 70, no. 70, 80, you know what I'm saying? No, like, no. you met uh -oh. me, but I, I knew Zip and them. I knew the executioner. Yeah, I battled buddy. with Doug. Them guys know I, me. I am, John knows me from back in the days. Yeah. We're talking about a whole different story. About here. Doug Wayne and all those all guys. Guys. I learned that Style was fashion. That that is that was always 
like one of the, 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 the baddest things about it is when you came in, you always wanted, oh, tangled out, you know, you got mm -hmm. the mark next. We blinged it out and we looked it good. We, you know, the belt buckles and... Suede Pumas with the fat shoestrings. Hold on, wait a minute. Coming to school with everything that everybody wanted to have. The gazelles, the, the sheepskins. You know, all fly. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and sometimes, uh, uh, sometimes, you get a lot of credit for that. When you was a b-boy, you were hip-hop. After a while, that word started spreading mm -hmm. to a b-boy was a dope dude, dressing mm -hmm. fresh and fly mm -hmm. and hip-hop. Because a b-boy like me, I also was a graffiti writer. My graffiti came early. My graffiti, my my um my project, the hallways, everything was graffiti up. The elevators took graffiti up, the hallways graffiti up, the buildings were graffiti up, staircases, everywhere. So when I was when I was already like five years old, six years old, my buildings been, been tagged up. You know what I'm saying? From from head to toe. So me being like learning how to draw, you know what I'm saying, I stopped writing my name on the wall. We can take it back to seventh grade. Like that's when I met him. I met him with a with a marker. <laughs> I had a damn flow pen, like graffiti marker, and I'm playing with it in class. He's like, "Oh, you right?" He was like, "Yeah." And that's where the connection started. I was at a summer youth program. Some guy used to write uh, "Too Swift," and he showed me himself on the tracks. His tag on the car while he's laying down on the tracks. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, this is crazy. How do you get to the tracks, though? My props was they get it everywhere. I want it everywhere you walk. You see, you see, uh. You were doing your thing. You know what I'm saying? You, know, like, you got your name, you got your equipment, meaning you racked up your paint, you had your ink, your markers. Teachers had to go erase the board. There was no more races because we took them. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know how that went. And so no, the man. class got delayed all the time, B. My mom's get tight. She used to have still the, the order in, in yeah. the thing, mm -hmm. and I empty that shit out and turn that shit into a metro yeah. market. Yeah. And it, it got out of control where you start grabbing anything that had any kind of perfume or underarm or yeah. cologne, anything mm -hmm. that you could pull off the top and stick a, a, a felt tip or erase it in there, mm -hmm. it was over. It mm -hmm. was over. You made a marker. My mother used to the, buy me clothes and be like, what the? Look at you. <laughs> you gotta know how to get your paint. You gotta steal, you steal your paint. You don't buy paint. If you was a real graffiti artist, you learn how to steal your paint. I was banned from Bombay because, you know, I yeah, never walked. Yeah, tell us why, tell us why. I asked Homeboy. I was the no. <laughs> it was racking up over there. No, no, I, asked, I asked Homeboy, I went there by myself one day. I was desperate to get some ink and shit to bomb that day. So I asked him for a whole lot. He put it on the counter. I saw the door, the counter, I had to time everything. Once he went, I said, yo, let me get one more. He went back there, I grabbed everything, threw all that shit, and ran out the door, and then came chasing me. I ran, but then someone rapped me out and said, yo, I think it's bomb, yeah. <laughs> because I went there one day, and that guy saw me, he said, you motherfucker. Bombay, my boy still works there. Yeah. That's where we went, and we used to do the... Yeah. Just like he was getting his props, it's by, after he, he got the stuff, the equipment, is now you gotta start hitting. First it happens in your building. Yes. Then it happens around your building. And then it happens in your friend's neighborhood. And then from your friend neighborhood to the next neighborhood. If you're gonna be booging or breaking or getting down, you start going different areas. You go to a different pool. You go to your boy that lives now on the other side, the west of yeah. Manhattan. You throw a tag while you're walking down yeah. there. If you're bombing, if you're just straight bombing, you're doing throw ups, you're just gonna do, you, you hit it, you hit a train and you keep it moving. That's two second pieces that'll just get your name up and you people can see it, you know? So you got a choice. You wanna do one big nice mural or you wanna do throw ups? Well, when it comes up to graffiti, it's, it's, we see uh, there's a couple of things. That's it's like. style, um, getting up. Because yeah, you could be a toy, you could be, you, you could, you could be whack. Unlike the more experienced writers, toys scribble anywhere. But if you, it's, you're all over the city, 
you gain your stripes, you know what I mean? Because you're up, you're everywhere. You're all city. Yeah. And, and like then there's too. people that have style that, you know, intricate, wild styles that take hours to do, you know, technique. Everything, you know, had different divisions to as far as the best. Who we looked up to, you know, Lee, Scene, T Kid, Lee, Lee, Pink, Des, you know, Des. Looking at this kid and he's and I'm coming out the train and I say, hey, yo, Shorty, what you write? You told me what you write. Uh, he gave me another name. I was like, oh, I write Maze, bro. Oh, okay, I'll tell you the truth. Bro. I was like, yo, shit, you, bro. To me, he was like a big star. Like, this kid was all over. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just trying to come up and he's already, he's been on board already for a minute, so... You see his train, his name on a train, on a lot of trains, on the sixth line. Brim, brim, brim. I'm like, oh shit, everywhere. Okay, cool. Yo, you want to write? I said, yeah. Okay, you could write my crew. I said, okay, cool. I met other guys that were down with the crew and we started collaborating. And we became a team. We were like united, you know what I mean? So everything we did was like, yo, what's up? Where you at? Where you? We going bombing. You coming? Three o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the morning. Yo. Get your paint. We out. Let's go. We're going to yards. We're going to tunnels. That was like another part of, uh, of the life, you know? Like, it was like... Tracks, where you before, because half that wood was broken up, like old wood. So if you run on that wood and you had caught a bad one, you could fall through. So half the time, I always ran home in the pole, just in case. It doesn't matter where you was at, you just have to be fast. Because you don't know police is coming, you don't know somebody's calling police. So it's like, you remember, we're doing illegal stuff. Most of the time, if you're in the tunnel, you can't see. So you might see like little lights here and there. So you're like, what color is this? Oh, I can't see that. And then you might spray yourself by mistake and trying to, go you know, and, and you're trying to be quiet and cool. and. You hearing things and you like your ears are wide open for for who's in the tunnel. You didn't want to get caught writing with a, from another crew. Cause then, you know, they'll take your paint or they're gonna they're gonna beat you down and that's gonna cause that's that that's gonna cause uh conflict between you and your crew. Oh word, that was this dude, or oh, word, oh shit, yo, we're gonna have beef with this crew. So it's gotten to that point with a lot of crews. A lot of people, people that got shot, people that got stabbed. You're like, yo, do I really want to be a part of this shit? For me, I try to learn my best and try to be away from certain spots. And you know, even if the spot was tempting, if I heard something about that, or if I scoped it out and it didn't look right or something, I wouldn't go. It wasn't worth it, but I did get electrocuted one time. I was doing a piece with my friend, and all I know, I, I put my arm, because I, I'm short, so I was trying to stretch all the way on top, to go on top of my piece to do some, put some colors up there, and I put my hand to cuff the bottom of the train, and I, my hand was connected to somewhere. And you hear that noise back then, do 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 So the generator went up, and my hand was touching, I went up, and everything's all metal, and I was trying to paint, and I got shot. I just felt myself moving. If it wasn't for my partner, Sid, he was a, he was a big dude, a big dude for his age. He took all his weight, and he just ran right into me, and he knocked me off. And I just stood there, and it was dark, kind of dark in that time, so I didn't know, I just put my hand in my mouth, you know? I just put, started putting my hand in my mouth, I started feeling my nails were soft. And when, when, we, when I got out to the light, my nails are all black. It all came off within a week or so. You was hospitalized? No, I didn't go to hospital. No, nah, no. Nah. <laughs> That's crazy. And when you're young, you're like yeah, that. Yeah, you feel yeah. you're good, I'm good. Like, you know anybody that passed away from the time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sim 1 died, you know. Uh, he fell in between the trains. Other guy, RC1. And sometimes hitting the tunnels was dangerous. A lot of tunnels had no clearance. 
So you'd be riding in the tunnel, think it was all clear, and the train came, you had no time to move, no space to go, and you die. You get hit by the train. What, what made you still love it with all the danger that came with it? I don't know, I think it was the thrill and the excitement just to get over on the system. Like, to get up in there and write your name, to cross the no trust. You know, like you finish the finish line in a race. In the, in the yard and the tracks, there's like the start of the line. You get in there, you do the train, you get out the finish line. So it was a big mission to go down there and see these trains. When you're standing on the platform, the trains look a certain height. But when you're on the ground where the wheels are, that train looks humongous. It's gigantic. And just to conquer that, to get in there, do something dope on the train, put your name in the inside, put your name on the outside, to hang out with your friends on the train and see your name go by, see your girl saying, oh man, I saw your name again. See your homeboys, oh yo. I see your name every time I go to school. I see your name on the inside. You feel good, you're, you're a superstar. It's like the B-boy. When you go to the jam and you rock, they see you again, they say, oh shit, I saw you at the party that time, man, in school. I say, yeah, you saw me? say, yeah, you were in the crowd doing some kind of crazy spin. You feel good. They're like, yo, everybody cheering for you. Can I learn that? And then, you know, that's how you pass it on. The graffiti girl, I mean, the people that don't know graffiti want to learn the graffiti, so you teach them. The people that don't know how to B-boy, you teach them. DJ, same thing. So you, you start becoming a mentor to other people. My mentor taught me to pass it on to the next, not to keep it to myself, be selfish. Just be open-handed and then you got more friends. You you build, you build yourself, you know? You build your friendship, you build your crew, you know? Next thing you know, you go in and out of different neighborhoods because your boy's from Edenwood. Your other boy's from Bronxdale. Your other boy's from Bronx River. You go to Taft, you got boys, you know? You got friends. And that's what hip hop did to me. It, it, communicated, it connected me to everybody. At the end of the day, how you feel, what hip hop has done for you in your life? And when you look at your kids, what do you tell them what you've done? I'll get to that. Okay, yeah, no. Hip hop, what it's done for my life? It took me out of trouble. It saved my life. I could have been robbing, stealing. I could have been in jail. I had many friends that wanted to do stick ups and that wasn't me. And oh my God, all I can say is that if it wasn't for hip hop in terms of breaking, a lot of people, a lot more people would have been in jail with that. Even though a lot of them ended up, you know, you'll get a superstar. I had an accident in 1988. I got shot in my back. It was first called Roxy's, but when I got shot, it was called 10, 1018's. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that was like a drug infested club. Everybody went there, everybody went there. Even, you know, all the, all the, all the El Cool J and everybody used to go up in there. Mike Tyson, everybody went up in there, but you know, you had a lot of us that got caught up in that life and the gold shine and you know, check out the ladies and have fun, and and it lead it to my life in prison. Was well, any of the brothers trying to pull you back? Like, yeah, be like, come on, Chino, man, like, oh, bro, you know, back with us, like, get back with Yeah, them. yeah. What what stopped you? The money. Mm -hmm. The money was the money has the money got good, but I didn't know where it was gonna where it was gonna lead me to. Being in prison, did you see him? With the whole, because when you, now you're in prison, you're seeing the movement grow. It's getting commercialized. It hurts. It's on TV. They got breaking. It hurts. They got turbo. They got all these. It things. hurts because you're chasing something else. And if you would have stayed chasing that, you would have been better because you would have been part of where is that today. Like, never, never turn to the dark side. Ever. Because trust me, I mean, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. See your family struggling. You got to make some decisions. You know, we become a product of our environment and we get caught up, man. We get caught up with this with, with, with temptation. See all this cars and, you know, and that's it. You know, th those that stuck with it, look at a uh, 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 candle and crazy legs. They stuck with it and a lot more other b-boys. And they okay. I mean... I, I, I'm certain everybody goes through they, through they down. We did a play called So What Happens Now? And, and in the play, Ken Swift does a thing. He goes, 
he went for a job application and they said, what's your skills? He put, I spin on my head. Like you, you can't get too far for that, right? Too far with that, but, but, but which, which is not really true. When the drugs came out, a lot of people stopped and they, you know, uh, got with their crew and, you know, they try to be like, um, you know, Fat Cat and Boy George and all these big drug dealers and all that, you know, Al Poe and all of them. They try to be like these big guys and they forgot what they started. They shooting each other and um, there wasn't nobody left, you know. Some of them died of AIDS, some of them died of gunshots and um, drugs. Uh, we lost a lot of friends, you know, and um, uh, we were the longest crew who stuck with our talent, didn't get distracted, you know, and kept dancing. Mm -hmm. You know, I found out from downtown that, um, you know, we ain't got to do crime or sell drugs or whatever. You could come down here and dance and make money, you know. And um, it happened. It happened that my mother took me and my brother downtown. It was this. Um, I guess he was a, a bum, like a dopey man, whatever. He was down there and sitting by the store, shoe store, with a little FM and AM radio. You know, back in those days, jams come on all the time. So we start doing some Soul Train moves, boom, 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 and we start popping and stuff. You know. You know, and they were like, you know, poor families was out there, you know, um, black mothers, mostly black mothers. A lot of black mothers were shopping for they stay kids, whatever. And they stopped to look at it. It was like, oh, these young boys could dance, you know, and, you know, and um, they started throwing money. So money started dropping on the floor. We was like, oh, snap, mm -hmm. that made us dance faster, you know. <laughs> and harder. And then she might start doing dollars, you know, because white people were stopping too. A crisp new $5 bill. And, she, and my mother seen that, she was like, you better go inside that store and get a shoe box because your money gonna fly away. That right there sparked, you know, you know, our uh, journey of street in, you know, where our talent was. So uh, me and my brother, Doug Wayne, we went to certain spots. We started having a, 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 a route from my house to museum on 86th Street, Fifth Avenue, 59th Street, 34th Street, 14th Street, the village, then come back up, 42nd Street, all the way to the west side to um, Lincoln Center. Then we go home. We would do this route, you know, constantly for years and it kept us out of jail. What happened to your brother? Yeah. And I'm glad you didn't tell me, you know, I'm glad to hear he's still around. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Still around. Cause I used to be like, it was, I said, yo, I told Al, I asked him, I said, it's supposed to be John and Will. Like, yeah, we had know? routines and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So happened, happened. Y'all was the brothers that had your little yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. So uh, he just, he just said, um, family life and going, uh, he he got caught up in a little way, you know. Um, you know the drugs hit hit people hard, and mm -hmm. um, you know certain things that going to prison all the time just couldn't shake it, and he mm -hmm. learned bad habits in prison. Yeah. And um, yeah. picking up dope was was one of the worst things that they, you know I never did that. Mm -hmm. But uh, now I try to tell him. But um, he just be like, yo, I don't know how you stop, man. I don't know how you stop. I explained to him, like, you know, we grow up. We did things back in the days and we grow up. But certain people that, you know, like a little brother passed away and I'm in jail. I just can't go back to jail no more and do certain shit. Watching my family, you know, disappear. That shit hurts, you know, mm -hmm. not being there. I can't do it. So, you know. I guess he's not he's not mature enough and he's 50 something too to let that shit go like you know I tell him all the time you know like I'm not gonna enable that because I've been there done that too you know not what you're doing but 
I've been there, I've been in the way. attic and coming back mm-hmm. and cleaning myself up and seeing what I, you know, talent and stuff like that in the places I've been. You know, I can't, I can't, I can't go back. You know, you can't go back. You can only go forward. So if you don't learn from that, you can't sit there and point at the white man all the time. You know, you got to dig within, grow up, you know. No excuse, you know, not to be a man. You got to be a man. So, you know, yeah. After after 80, I just feel like it has to go to the next evolution. But no matter how you look at the evolution, it came from New York or anything. Or the evolution from all moves, especially the Bronx with the power moves too, you know? Uh, after that evolution, then came the rest of the United States. After the United States, then came the rest of the world. Hip hop had a lot to do with it, cause that's where, cause along as rapping and DJing, and we was always in the mix. That's how people started recognizing it and knowing it, and 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 word started spreading fast, and and it kept going. Which a lot of people probably thought, you know, like the same thing they thought with hip hop wasn't gonna last, and look where is that today? Mm-hmm. And look at breakdance. It's going to the Olympics. You believe that? Mm-hmm. It's going to the Olympics. I always knew that there was more to the world than just the block where I live at. That was the world to us, coming outside and seeing our friends and stuff. That was our world, going to the store, the penny candy and stuff like that. That was our world. But um, as we grew up, it seemed like the block got small. I started doing tours. My next tour that came up was Morocco, North Africa. All six of us went out there. And that's when my life really changed because I became Muslim. Like being in the streets of New York for so long and eating the food that they had um, changed my complexion. When I went to Morocco, I started eating certain stuff that was rich with no chemicals. It made my skin peel, peel, like literally peel like, you know, you be in the water too long. My skin was peeling and underneath that was fresh, clean skin. You know, I was glowing. So I was like, wow, you know. Africa, you know, North Africa. And that show, you know, it made me look at America like everybody want to come to America. Everybody's like, oh, you're from America. Everybody want to go there. But I live there and it's not all of that. To me, I had the attitude like, you know, you guys got real natural stuff, gold, food, family, culture. Each of us went on tour and, you know, we took a little piece back with us, you know. I went to Morocco, a Muslim. Girls from Japan, I teach arts there too, it's like, you know, I never thought that I would have a Japanese wife, you know, today. I went to Japan in 1979, you know, I went to Japan in 1979 in the summer. I helped make the Roxette Japan chapter. You did? Wow. I do. Teach them about graffiti, teach them about b-boying. It was hard to speak, but everything was taught by motion. A lot of the b-boys I started learning how to dance was not dancing to the beat of the music. So they were just all over the place. When I went out there, I was like, no, b-boying dance is about dancing to the beat. You gotta learn how to, you gotta learn the music so you can dance with the music. And I helped build a lot of crews out there. A lot of crews and uh, uh, you just wanna see it go one way. And Japan took it the next way. You know, I like to see that, that, it, you know, what we did when we grew up, we would never know that, just like they say, hip hop would take it this far. We never know that our style would go that far to Taiwan, where they would know your name in Taiwan or Japan or other side of the world. What I love about what's happening right now is that it's really international. You see children age five years old doing moves that we could not fathom. Incredible! Whether they're Russia, China, 
Korea. These dudes right now are taking it to a whole new level. I mean, I, I see guys like, you know, uh, I think Jabberwockies, these guys are nice. And they got it all coordinated. I mean, we, we coordinated later on, but when we first came out, you, you did your own thing. You had your own signature moves, and that's what you did in your battles. Now, most of these things are, are, are coordinated and they're, and they're actually a dance. And I, I see that as, you know, that, that's, that's, that's showing me that that's the level we could have taken it to had we been more, had we had somebody there to coordinate with us. Seen a lot of stuff, man, on uh, Facebook and YouTube and all that. And wow, you know, like the B-Boy, you see a lot of acrobatics in it, which is, it, 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 I mean, listen, I mean, to make people ooh ooh that's that's that, that's cool but don't forget the, the 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 you know how we wasn't acrobatic like you gotta try to figure out as a dancer you don't only dance you 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 feel it here but you also tell a story you know it's it's a it's a whole different level like in my eyes like what you what the crowd see is different from what I feel while I'm dancing. You understand what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm telling, I'm telling a whole story there. You know, like I'm giving you my whole life story. Some kids don't get it. Like, they don't, they don't, they don't get that that dance is. It's really like something you love. Now, it's interesting to me because a lot of the people who are incredible um, dancers, I was gonna say martial artists, martial arts included, just artists in general, never had a chance to step up their game in the professional realm. So they started getting mad at the people who was actually getting work. Well, the reason they were getting work is one of the reasons, like I mentioned before, that they got there on time. Another thing was that they had a dream to, make, to be professional. Congratulations. Oh, thanks. Professional wasn't part of what hip hop was about. We were just trying to express ourselves. We were freaking stinking broke and we were trying to express ourselves from our frustration. But back in the days, it was basically it was blacks and Hispanics. Yeah, yeah. Now yeah. you see, thing. Now you yeah. see everybody and this is worldwide. This is our thing. We started. And now, you know, we got the, you know. And I don't say it, but we don't want to make but it. I said, it. they never was in the Bronx. They never came to hang out where we did that mm -hmm. in the ghetto. just dancing oh huh? we're yeah. just dancing that's all we're doing trying to get good and dance our way out of our projects you know if there was let's say a hundred thousand breakers before there's millions now because literally you have corporate sponsorships like Red Bull and Monster who I particularly think that's probably the worst sponsors. They're the ones that are giving the money because you guys know what that does to the heart rate and how dangerous that is, you know? <laughs> it's dangerous. There's, there's alternative ways to get the energy with a pre-workout than to put that, but I love the fact that they're on the platform now and it's professional. I love that because realistically, people are earning money with their their talents. Hey, Pop ain't no, it's no more, man. Mm. It's a whole I new game. Like the game ours. changed now. Yeah. When you say hip hop, it's a culture that was supposedly subculture, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. it wasn't part of the plan. You know what I mean? And the thing is, we determine what was hot and what's not. Nowadays, we don't determine what's hot and what's not. You, you people just help make them music and videos, and no, this is what hot. They play it a thousand times a day, and they program it into okay. what's hot and what's not. Uh, we used to determine what's hot and what's not. There's a lot of this music that... I don't know. You know, mumble rap, the mumble rap, yeah. You know what it is, is they got it they got so food. easy. <laughs> nah, not that. Not only that. The whole world is right now... Kids so grow up on this. Zombified. Yeah. When it was us, like, oh, go outside? Don't tell me go outside, because you're going to have to come get, get me. me. Yeah, man. You know what I mean? Now we you tell the kids, go, go outside, go play. Nah. You know Hold up, give me 15 more minutes, man. <laughs> but nowadays, like... You know, we try to be the best parents that we can. We try to yeah. make them, sh make them not go through what we went through. 
our parents would have been would have been arrested. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen, my neighbor brought me home one day <laughs> to my grandma, and daddy grandma didn't know Spanish. Mm. And my neighbor's black, and she's like, mm -hmm. be like what, "What are you grabbing that lady, that boy for?" Because she found him hanging on a, on something dangerous. Yeah, people in your she neighborhood. She brought me with, to the door they know like you. this. And she knocked on the door, and she they, she don't speak a lick of English, mm -hmm. but she understood. Like, why he did? You, I saw him. I found him. Yeah, I, I got I beat know. up all the way inside. But mm -hmm. man, yeah, you know, man. we took care of each he other. Took that care way. Of you, no matter what color. Toronto moms used to hold me down. Yeah. And the, the neighborhood raised every kid in the neighborhood, right. whatever block you was on. We were in the community. Yeah. Everybody was like a, a real. Community, you know, mm. we didn't call cops on each other and stuff exactly. like that. Ain't nobody tell snitch to nobody. Yeah, exactly. We don't play that shit. I, I would say for the know, better, a lot of things is for the better, but I mean, uh, a lot of the mom and a lot of things is being washed away too, like mm -hmm. uh, our history. Like every time we come down to the city, me and him, I'm always pointing up. I'd be like, look, Frank, another building. Buildings Another there. building. When we look, the face of the city is changing. Mm -hmm. So there's buildings being torn down that we're not never gonna see again. When we come here to Harlem, I still love it because I'd be like, "Yo, you see that building? Malcolm X was used to took a picture in front of there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It still is what it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You go a lot of places now, you don't even recognize it anymore. You know, like times, oh, it's gonna happen. Times change, but yeah, yeah. I mean, losing a lot of what we fought for, oh, that breaks my heart. Like you said, the small mom and pop stores, like, mm -hmm. geez, you can't like, bring like that bag, that more person toys touch. Right. Oh, oh, yeah, that was Dandy's. Remember Dandy's? Yeah, Dandy's, yeah. yeah. Yo, he said remember the Morris bike? Remember the bike? Okay, this is the infamous junior high school 13. This is where I used to go to school at. Um, I mean, like, this school here was so crazy back in the days. Only the tough guys wanted to go to this school. And... At one point, I thought that I was tough, you know? So, one day I'm coming to school, I had on my brand new Woolrich coat, uh, my Timberland boots. This was back in, um, I believe it was 1976, 77, something like that. And my own crew, I used to be down with the floor masters, which I was a floor master tot. I was the in the, in the younger group. And the floor masters were the older guys. So anyway, I'm coming to school, my Woolridge on, my Timberland boots, and I'm banging on the back door to get in, in inside the door. And they didn't come fast enough. I see a bunch of guys who are who, who are part of my, my my crew, the floor masters, come through the tunnel. So I'm thinking they're coming over to say what's up to me and everything. But then these guys end up coming up to me, punching me in my face, yoking me up, throwing a razor to my throat, and robbing me for my Woolridge and my Timberland boots. And um, I mean, like, I was devastated. It, it, it was like 20 something degrees that day, you know, for me to go home and tell mom that I just got robbed and she just bought that for me, you know? So it, it, it was crazy, but then um, the moral is I got them back, you know? Me and my man right here, B. Stu, my man uh, Kwame, we got them back right on 3rd Avenue at the pizza shop. I saw them one day when I was in the pizza shop, we playing video games. And I saw two of the guys that was there from the crew crossing the street on 106th Street. And I came out, I told Beef Stew about it, and I told Kwame about it. I said, these are the guys that robbed me. And they said, so what you want to do? I said, what you think I'm going to do? So we went over to them. And I mean, like, it, just, it, it was just me by myself. Kwame and Kev, they was there just for support. They just stood over the guys while I beat them down and took their shit off of them. And then I just, um, I didn't even want their shit. I didn't even want their gear, nothing like that. I took it, ripped it up, and threw it in the garbage and made and, them walk home butt naked. And see, that's the moral of the story. See, the moral of the story uh, back in the hip hop, hip hop wasn't uh, about run, get your gun, go kill. You had to fight. That's right. You had to fight to keep the sneakers. If you thought you was cool enough to wear a pair of Adidas with no laces in it, you're gonna have to prove that because somebody's that's gonna right. try to take them, them no laces right. off your feet. If you thought you was cool enough to wear you a pair of gazelles you was little, or you're gonna go to buy, or you're gonna save that money and go to Dapper Dan and buy that Gucci or Fendi jacket, you had to fight for it many That's of right. times. That's you right. want to go to these jams out back in the days, or come to the jams outside, you had to fight for it. And one thing about back in the days, it was real, your project wouldn't even back you if you ain't fight. 
you had to fight. Like dudes would say, yo, we can't back you unless you fight for yourself. That's right. That's and, right. Well, we don't that's care if you is. lose, that's but as long as you fight for that's yourself, right. you got to you know show. And you that show was hip hop. No matter how, how big the other guy is, as long as you can, you, you, you put in the effort of fighting back. And then, I mean, like, you, you got support from the whole, from, from the whole neighborhood. Lot. You know what I mean? I mean, they won't let you get jumped or anything like that, you know, but you got to show that you're not afraid to fight back. And a lot of times in the jams, that's what happened. Dudes get into a fight. Instead of the jams getting shut down by somebody shooting, they would step off to the side, the older dudes or the OGs of the project, and everybody would hold each other down, and it'd be us with my niggas on my project on this side, and the dude and his niggas on the project side, and they say, yo, y'all just get to scrapping. And that's we it. scrapping. We go scrapping, 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 and you know, and we just, and then a lot of times we shook hands. And a lot of times yep. after the fight, we yep. go smoke some weed together. Yep. And exactly. shook hands. A lot of these dudes are my boys now. Yep. Dudes who I have the utmost respect for now. That's right. And that's, that's right. and I think if a lot of these young kids would do that now, yeah. with they beefs and learn that if it's that serious, we go somewhere and we handle it like men. That's right. And like men, and then when it's over, we shake hands. Yeah. There'll be a lot more friends and a lot less deaths out here, man. Yeah. And that's what the original hip hop did. You know, back then everybody fought. You know, you didn't have you didn't have all this gunplay now. You had some guys with a knife, but that was like the lead of the gang had the knife, or one guy had the gun. And he shot it up in the air and everybody ran and that was the end of the fight. At mm -hmm. 3 o'clock, there was always a fight on 149th Street. Mm -hmm. When the train and the, the train buses was different, remember they yeah. used to get bus transfers yeah. by yeah. hand, remember? Yeah. Yeah. There was always a fight there yeah. on 149th Street. Yeah. So, the world is a different place now. Kids are scared to fight. Mm -hmm. They're scared to lose a fight. Everybody only went to certain places. So if you're talking crap, and you're still gonna come to that jam, or to that park, or a certain place, you're gonna get had. Mm -hmm. Or you're gonna get stepped to and be like, yo, what's up, man, let's do this now. It's not like now, everybody's hiding, especially with the internet, come on, dude. It's different now. Because back then, we dance for fun, and there would be a prize and stuff like that. If you win or lose, you're still friends at the end of the day, you know? Today, it ain't like that, you know? Today, it's like, you know, I gotta feed my family, I don't care, you know, or respect what you came up doing. I want to battle you and there's no love in the dance whatsoever. They're not really dancing for the love of it, they're dancing for the money. And the thing that used to drive you crazy was this. We were the people who lived the culture. Yes, some got more props as what would be pioneers and legends, and there's a lot of unsung heroes. A lot of people are not recognized and, and 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 it's, it's 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 sad because of the fact that we we was a part of what it is today, and and anniversaries are about everybody in the old school coming together. Now anniversaries are all about the new and forget about the old, and there's no recognition because really we got our own names already. We 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 make our own paths, you know. But but show recognition, show you know, introduce people. Uh, about two years ago, they had the wild style. Uh, they had the wild style um, anniversary, and um, Fable was on the stage. And as soon as he seen me, he shouted me out. He told everybody who I was, and a lot of people started, "Oh shit!" And they came to me, and they were like, "Yo, yo," because a lot of people don't know. I've been, I've been, you know, I chose a different life after a while, but I was always still connected to all, a lot of my rock study brothers. Then you got certain names that come out and those are the names that people stick with, you know? So, you know, it's just, it's just props to everybody that put in their work. Yeah. Grego, he had this crazy move with his, I don't know, some type of crab move. He cut people up with that, man, because he was double jointed. You know, these are the kind of guys that, you know, didn't get the recognition that, you know, Rocksteady got. You know, the Small Master Tots, they were, good, they were a good crew. Crusaders was a good crew. Yeah, and you know, I regret things like not having video. A lot of us early b-boys, I mean, come on, man. You had El Dorado Mike, he was a dope b-boy that became a dope hustle dancer. You had no footage of him, but he rocked. He rocked. How about Cisco Kid? He's dead, but he rocked that floor, B. He was nasty, you know? Phase two. Yeah, they know he was a b-boy, but no one could see him, you know? But, you know, I was there, so I got... This is why I want to keep these guys' names alive, man. 
it's like this, like you said, you know, people don't get recognized, uncelebrated pioneers. So if I sit there dedicated, I'll be here all night because there's so many people that passed away and never got recognized. I miss all, all of them and I give, you know, I, I wish they were all here, but you know, they will never be forgotten. And when we was coming up breakdancing back then, we always had each other's back wherever we were, you know? And I know the, the, the ones that are real famous today, forget that. I have heard stories that people say, yo, because of you is because of why I'm a DJ. I used to see your graffiti jackets. I used to see you breakdancing in, in the plaza. It's something that they remember me as a piece of history. I told a lot of people and I made me feel good because I passed on my art to them and showed them this is how it is. I, was not, I didn't like to battle all the time, just like passing the love down to people, showing what it was about. But that was my thing. To this day, I still do it for the love and the creation. I just love it. It makes me feel good when I'm dancing. I know I taught a lot of people how to write into the graffiti world. I brought a lot of people mm -hmm. into the graffiti world. Um, and graffiti artists are proud. They're not going to say, yeah, he taught me. Graffiti artists don't do that. No, I learned this on my own, you did. But I, I, I mean, that alone that I know I did it, I'm good with that. You know what I mean? What I care about, to tell you the truth, is the people that I was with at the time down there that still give me the love and still represent me in Japan or when I went to Korea in 94 or to Paris in the 80s or UK. The people that was there give, still give me the love to this day. That's why I care. I don't care about all this stuff in New York. People like, ah, oh, you know, this spy pass bar fives history. He, didn't, he wasn't in this movie. He was in that movie. Well, he's not in the forefront. Because I got to think about my life. So I took care of my life and the people that was around me. So all that other stuff, you know, getting bypassed, I'm good. Look at us, how many we years later? Yeah, you know, we we met each other, how old are you, 13 and 7th grade? Yeah, and man. We're, I'm 50 what? I'm 50 what? I'm 50 and we're still together? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Everything that, you know, at that age you come up with, Basically. they don't leave you. And the, and the day that you leave it and abandon it is when that person is going to start seeking different problems. You know, that's what happened to me. You know, if I would have stuck with the arts, maybe it would have gone differently. But once you just, if you are artist and you disown, disown, disown the arts, like it's not gonna be pretty. And it really drove me crazy. I'm saying, why is it that hip hop as a culture, meaning the rap portion of it, was making so much money and the pioneers and legends didn't have a pot to piss in and a window to throw it out of? I didn't understand that, and then I do understand it now because because creativity, people who are creative don't normally earn money. Your right side thinking brain doesn't allow you to do anything else but express yourself. The left side manager, they make you do the dough. But you gotta have balance. Left side and right side of the brain, that's how you have the equilibrium, the yin and the yang, the hip and the hop. And some people have learned. Most people still have it. If you like drawing, you know, stay with it. The art is, art is never going to stab you in your back. Art is never going to disown you. Art is never going to leave you. You know what I'm saying? It's always going to be in and keep you company. You know what I'm saying? You could be by yourself and you could draw, you could dance, you could, you could DJ by yourself in a house and you could and you could have fun. Still dance to this very day? To this day, I still dance. You still do graffiti to this day? I still do graffiti to this day. That's real. Yeah, I That's still true. rap. I still make music. I still DJ. I, I make my own beat. I, I sit in my crib for two days and I'll come up with something. My mother fed my love of art. So when I used to draw, she always used to buy me stuff. So I went from graffiti to tattoos now. I do tattoos. For me, as a 54 year old, I'm more excited about breaking, breaking, b boy, hitting the ground, than I was when I was a teenager. You know why? Because I can still do more than most. And about a year ago, I couldn't. I couldn't. Why should you ever stop dancing? You know those old guys that were doing tap? All of them were in shape. I never seen them. Either. They were still doing splits. You know, whether it was Bojangles back with freaking dancing with, with Shirley Temple. <laughs> so 
So why can't we as B-boys do the same thing? I'm 55. I still got my style. I still go out there and dance sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, it ain't for money no more. You know, I get money doing it, but it ain't for money. It's like, you know, to you keep yourself in shape, to be in touch with the young. Make sure, you know, they don't forget. They doing light feet. They doing dancing on the train. Oh my God. But they know me as an OG saying, yo, that's the dude that started this shit. If it wasn't for you, you wouldn't be making no money out here, you know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's a, that's a deep thing to see these kids grow up and then they have kids and grow up. And I'm like, dancing through generations. I've been home almost five years and I've, I've chose different paths and it's been good and I've go to a lot of events and just learning what because because in order to start doing things you want to know what you up against and how to come about it so that way you don't do the same things they doing do something better and you bring something to the table because I got a good idea and if it comes out right the hip-hop world would know but as far as um, the contribution, eh, it's done. Whoever needed to learn and get what I needed to give, it's, it's out there. And I'm proud of that. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And the point is, the fact also remains, like he just said, I'm still giving. It mm -hmm. don't stop. You know what I mean? You got, in order to make it live, you got to still give it away. You know what I mean? If you really, if you really want to help people for generations to come, become an educator. Become an educator. Pass it down. Some of you right now are in the worst physical shape of your life and you don't have to be. You're not even happy about that. Start slowly but surely doing some of your moves. How? Start teaching your grandkids. Have some fun. Interact the same way the older people used to have us doing the two steps, you know. Basically, it's like, oh, never give up on your dream, man. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just somebody who puts something together. Like, you know, like I take a lot of credit for what I have done. You know, if it's positive and you want to be an artist, listen, man, it's, it's, you don't never know how, how big is going to, you're going to reach, you know, that level. If I've been doing this for a long time, it's, it, I have something got to come out of it. You know what I'm saying? You go to school for years, you got to graduate. If you're still alive, you have a chance. They call today a gift. They call it a present because it's a gift. Do something with that. Each one, teach one. I bet, I challenge you to a battle this time next year. Get yourself in shape because I'm doing it. You get what I'm saying? And that's it. I don't want to talk to you no more. I'm out of here. Later. Take two. I gotta wet my whistle. All right. Yeah, I got. I got. Right, I got a good. Oh, thank you. I know I went off on a tangent, but I figured you get some confidence nah, there. Up. Bottom line is this: we all wanted to party and have fun. So yeah, it's not that I'm Have fun. Have, have, have fun. This is one of my first rhymes. Well, I'm MC Wiz Kid. I'm the MC King because I can rap on the mic and do my thing. So I gain control, show what I know, let everybody know that I'm the king of this show. Yes, yes, y'all. I remember seeing Wiz Kid on flyers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I was a different dude. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't as popular as him. Let me go by.
<laughs> How you did the robot? <laughs> I'll show you. Let me see. You got to see. Let me see. How you did? We was ready to fight. That's right. We were like, yo, y'all niggas want to get out, we want to get out. That's, that's, right. that's how B-Boy right. was. Right. People don't really realize that's how <laughs> B-Boy really that's came. Right. It was going to either be a right. fight yeah. or we going to get down. Am I right? right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. 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 In this world, all you got is you. <laughs> There's a lot of ungratefulness that's gonna pay for this. I extended my hand so long to where I'm taking this. So I'm banking this. Business move, new investments. It's a different lifestyle when you come in your efforts. My future looking like Gerald now, all bright. My signature moves is writing checks, it's the corporate life. It's a whole lot different when you make it different. Depending how you make your living from the lane you're driven. Nobody saw my vision, no faith in me, I'm laughing with them. They even actually turn their backs on me, okay, I get them. Money on the truth and what you lie for it. Not only did I had the heart, I had the mind for it. AJ Less is for it, overlast with British walkers. Wasn't much of a talker, never one for taking orders. Went to school with Richard Porter, RIP. Every time I look around, all I see are the generic clowns. Look how the 80s did us, and who's still around, and who's no longer with us. Hoping that God forgive us for being lost niggas. In the midst of shooters and kills, even the COVID kids.